You're listening to MMA Odds Breaker. I'm Frank Trigg. This week, on the other end of the phone, we got Jim Miller getting ready to battle at UFC 168 against Fabricio Cameos. Jim, how you been, bud? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How, what's new in your world since uh, your last fight with Pat Healy? Um, I had another baby. <laughs> 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 they, they picked it up. You know, now, I got, now I got three, and that's, that's good for me. Now, now my wife and I are uh, outnumbered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, uh, and in about... a uh, baby girl. In about six, in about six months, you're going to be not only going to be outnumbered, but you're going to be overpowered. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> how's how's the baby girl doing? How's everything going with her? She's everything's fine. She's healthy. Everything's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's good. She's, uh, you know, she had a uh, my wife had a tough pregnancy with her, tougher than the other two, but uh, she's been she's been really healthy and, and uh, doing great. What? What has it been like training camp with a newborn? I mean, you've done it before, but what's it like having her? <laughs> in the house and sleep patterns and feed patterns and all that stuff? Uh, you know, you, I don't know. I'm, I'm used to it by now. I don't know what it's like to, to not have to deal with it at this point. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, it's uh, it's fun, that's for sure. You know, I mean, you deal with it. I'm, I'm a parent, and, and it's just one of those things. You're going to have to deal with uh, going to work with a little less sleep some, some days. Well, this is going to be her first Christmas, and this Christmas you're going to be spending here in, in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Is the whole family coming, or are you going to wait until uh, you get back to celebrate Christmas with them together once you get done? Oh, yeah, I'm definitely not taking them all out there. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah they're, they're going to stay out here, and uh, you know, my mother-in-law is going to watch them because uh, my parents are coming out to watch the fight. Um, you know, and we'll, we'll celebrate, and hopefully, uh, hopefully have a good, good Christmas afterwards, you know, uh, on like New Year's or something like that, so. Is your wife coming with you out here to Vegas and, and leaving the kids behind with your mother-in-law? Uh, yeah, she'll be coming out uh, not with me, but I think next the following day. Mm. Now, is that I know it's it's tough because you, you're you're a family guy. You want to be around your kids and all that, but your wife is kind of a, an anchor for you, right? She kind of calms you down a little <laughs> bit and gets you settled, and, and you know, having her around actually helps with the weight cut and all that and all that stuff. Correct? Uh yeah. You know, I mean, it's just that that little bit of normalcy. You know. Um, you know, I've got a, I've got a great team, great corners and stuff like that. But you know, when <laughs> it's, it's the per- the person I spend the most time with is my wife. So um, when I'm when I'm just hanging out with her in the room, you know, when I'm feeling my crap, um, it's it's a lot easier to deal with just because uh, you know she's my she's my best friend. You know, so um, yeah, it just makes it a little bit easier sometimes when you're when you're hurting. There. Uh, um... When you say she's your best friend, does she also yell at you a little bit when you don't, you know, when you are uh, getting too down on yourself for a bad practice? Does she yell at you a little bit when you're when you're not uh, amped up enough during fight week? Um, not you know, fight week she she uh, she just kind of deals with with the the, the fluctuation in, in mood, uh, you know, that happens when you're cutting weight. Um, she uh, she's on me, you know, about diet and stuff like that, and you know, uh, doing the extra things to help recover and. You know, like uh, icing up when, you know, uh, come home, have to put the kids, you know, she should tell me to just go, go relax, go ice up, stuff like that. So, um, you know, she really is, uh, you know, does help me and, and, and is very supportive. All right, let's talk about uh, Fabricio Camaos, your opponent. Mm-hmm. When you're watching tape on him, what do you, where do you think that he's the most dangerous? Um, I think he's the most dangerous on the ground. You know, he's, uh, he's a good grappler. He's, he's, he's dangerous. He takes a lot of guys back. Um, you know, and I think that um, that's going to be his his biggest opportunity to win the fight is going to the ground. Um, I'm I'm very confident on the ground. Uh, you know, and, and I I think I am better than him, but um, you know, I I think I'm going to have a, a distinct advantage on the feet. So uh, you know, I'm 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 only going to go the mat if it's, it's on my terms. Well, you know, when it comes to your wins, if you're 22 wins, three KOs, 12 submissions, and seven decisions. So obviously, you come in shape and. You've got a great submission game. Of his 14 wins, he has four KOs, seven submissions, and three decisions. So from a record standpoint, you guys are pretty close as to how you win yeah. percentage-wise to your mm-hmm. to win your fights and what have you. Although, technically speaking, you're much better on your, on your feet than he is. Like Just from a technical standpoint, you're, you're, you're way better on your feet. And correct me if I'm wrong, Jim. If, I, if I'm talking out of my ass, just let me know. But it seems like a lot of the submissions you get – are from cracking the guy in the head a couple of times first, and then he doesn't know which way to go, and he kind of gets caught in a submission because you just beat him up on, you know, beat him up with striking, whether it's your elbows, your knees, or, or your fists. Um, 
is that kind of how you get a lot of your submissions that you find yourself punching your way into submissions? Uh, it, it is. It is. Yeah. You know, um, I, I am a, a, a grappler to begin with, you know, and, and I was, <laughs> I was basically fighting, you know, my early fights without really any, any, uh, formal, uh, striking training. So, you know, I just went in there and bit down the mouthpiece and, 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 you know, just threw some leather. Um, so when I created that opportunity where it would either, you know, go for, go for the, the finish with strikes, you know, knock out the KO, or, uh, go for the submission. I always went for the submission. Um, and it continues to be, you know, my style. Like, I try to fight a little bit more, uh, tactically and, and, and try to be more of a, a surgeon these days than, than a butcher, uh, like I was in the beginning. But, um, you know, yeah, I, I do set up a lot of my subs from either string a couple attacks together or, yeah, land, land some good strikes. There, uh, and does that, does that work into your training camp too, the way, all that? Because you really have to think about, you know, how am I going to get into this submission position? How can I get into this space? So during training camp, do you actually train from a striking position to get into, to get into your submission game? Uh, we do, uh, do quite a bit of, you know, the situational type stuff. Um, where you you know you're kind of replicating that where you where you um, yeah gain gain you know a dominant position off the strike and stuff like that um, you know I, I just try to I just try to train to be be sharp and uh, and just aggressive um, you know I'm, I'm I don't know I just I just I just like that the feeling of the finish so that's that's what I try to do in my training and, and try to really just um, you know, work on that solid technique so that if an opportunity arises in the fight, you know, I just pounce on it and not have to think about it. Okay. You know, there, there, it's a, it's a difficult situation too, because now there's so much tape and film, especially on you. Mm -hmm. What do you think he's looking at? What do you think he's going to say about you? If, if, uh, uh, when he's looking at tape on you and getting ready to prepare for the fight? Um, you know, I, I think he's going to try to push me and, and, uh, you know, I, I've, Unfortunately, lost two two fights by submission, so he's probably working on a submission game as well, and, and uh, you know, going to be um, you know looking for it. So, um, you know, my last outing, I, I first time in my my career that I felt I, I actually gasped, uh, and oh. it really hurt me. Um, you know, I, I've been tired before, I slowed down before, but that was the first time I ever felt like I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I couldn't do anything. Uh, technical towards the end of the fight and uh you know and i paid the price for it so um yeah i'll be looking at that one he's probably just gonna try to push me around and, and uh you know keep some pressure on me okay i'm i'm surprised to hear that you feel like the last time you fought that you were running out of gas what, do you know what happened or was there a particular reason was it bad train camp or a bad diet or nerves that night i don't know just bad night you know i i, I experienced i don't know it was just uh i couldn't couldn't really bring my heart rate down you know in between rounds it, it stayed stayed high, I, I felt, you know, felt it stay high between the first and second, and, you know, at the end of the fight, it took me, like, a half an hour to stop breathing heavy and, and, uh, kind of calm myself down finally, and it was, uh, it was weird, you know, and it's just one of those things, it might have been just the night, you know, and the, and the tough fight, um, and there's so many little things that can affect you that you don't have control over, um, so I, I just kind of, I don't, I don't really let it bother me, you know, I, um, I, I try to, you know, try to control the things that I control and, and the things that I can't, I try to just deal with, um, you know, in, in fight time. And um, I wasn't able to last time, and, you know, and I paid the price for it. All right, Jim, thanks for coming on here. MMA Odds Break, I appreciate it. Good luck. Uh, I'll well, just see you here. I'll see you this week coming down. I'll be, uh, I'll be in town, so I'll see you when you get over here. Cool. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. Oh, hey, if you got any of that beer you make, uh, you can bring it with you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> see you, bud. Have a good one, bud.